Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is a PCRM cooking instructor, and she is going to be making a traditional plant-based South Indian meal free of oil and sugar. And I'm so excited because I, like everyone, loves Indian food and what could be better than having a meal without oil. Her name is Shoba Swami. Please welcome her to the show. Thank you so much for taking your time to show us how to make delicious Indian food healthy. Thank you. Thank you, Chef AJ. Namaste. And uh, that's how we greet in in, uh, uh, India. And welcome, everybody. I'm so honored and proud to be on the show. I've been following you for a number of years now. So let's get started. I can't wait. And, and if you have time, I'd love to hear your story, how you found out about a plant-based diet. Sure, sure. I'll let you know. So we started off as being vegetarians. We are generationally vegetarians for as long as we can remember. Traditionally, many of the Indian uh, households are vegetarian and all those who are non-vegetarian as well know how to cook excellent vegetarian meals. So uh, we've been over lacto vegetarian all my life. And uh, slowly our kids, when I came here to the United States and had kids, and when they were in high school, they brought home uh, after watching the movie Food Inc. and reading the book Fast Food Nation, they brought home the atrocities that go on in the uh, factory farm industry. And they brought all the information home and showed it to us. So it didn't take too much convincing for me because I wasn't a big milk drinker or, but we used to eat a lot of yogurt. We used to make about a half a gallon of yogurt every four or five days at home. And we make homemade yogurt at home. So that was a big challenge, especially for my husband on how to swing over to the other side or what to do about our um, yogurt. But a good friend of ours figured out how to make soy yogurt at home. And so we've been doing that for a number of years now. So once the kids brought it home, this was way back in 2013, I think. Um, It was it was quick. It was it was a no brainer at all for me. So then I started to look into all the details about the science and the nutrition behind it. So I discovered T. Colin Campbell, his classes and all the other doctors and you as well, Chef AJ along with Dr. McDougall and everybody else. So I read up a lot and I found out, found out all the details and uh, started to become an instructor as well to teach people how to follow this lifestyle. And then of course, PCRM, uh, Food for Life instructor, I got my certification through them. I got my certification in plant-based nutrition through T. Colin Campbell's course, and there was no looking back. I started volunteering as well as a vegan for Educated Choices Program, an organization uh, whose founder is from Atlanta, Georgia, Lorraine Amuke, and I shout out to her as well. So I worked with her for about three years, giving presentations at schools, colleges, universities, yoga studios about the effects of animal agriculture on the environment, animal agriculture on our food, and animal agriculture on the animals themselves. So these were three different presentations. We went to schools, colleges, and universities and gave, and it was, it was well received. And they would invite, teachers would invite us back again and again. So I loved that role where I was working for um, Educated Choices Program. Those days it used to be called Ethical Choices Program. And then there was no turning back. Now I work at Morehouse School of Medicine alongside Dr. Jennifer Rook teaching optimal health classes, and we run these all through the year. So without further ado, let's get started on the food because I can keep talking and we can do some of the cooking as well. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. So this is traditionally, it's a South Indian meal from Karnataka, a state in India, Southern state of India where Bangalore is the capital of Karnataka and it's the IT capital as well. Many people may know of Bangalore. So this is called Rava Idli and traditionally made out of cream of wheat. But today we're going to make a gluten-free version just to give it a twist. And it's made out of millets. Millets, as you know, are seeds from grass. 
So I've taken one cup of millets here, roasted them, and then powdered it. So just lightly roast it in a pan and then powdered it, and it's now good to go. So I will begin by showing you how I assemble this. Here's one cup of millet roasted and coarsely powdered to the consistency of cream of wheat, to which I will be adding one tablespoon of grated ginger, fresh ginger. We use a lot of ginger in our cooking, as you already know. And then green chilies, crushed green chilies, about a teaspoon or so. You, of course, all of this is adjustable to your taste. And then we use carrots or any other vegetables too can be added. You can add crushed peas or chopped zucchini, any one of these. Today we'll be using carrots in this. And then here's the special ingredient, which is a plant-based yogurt. Remember I was telling you we make soy yogurt at home. So this is homemade soy yogurt, which we'll be adding about one cup of to this entire mixture. And then one cup of water as well. So one is to two ratio for these millet idlis. They're called idlis. And it's a special form of idlis. Traditionally, idlis are uh, fermented overnight and then made, ground up, fermented, and then made. But this is a quick form of idli called rava idli or cream of wheat idli. Rava or suji is cream of wheat was called. So this makes a watery slush, if you can see how it looks. And we will be setting this aside to steam, but it needs to sit for about 20 minutes. So we'll set this aside for it to come together. And then we show you uh, a chutney that we go, that's a dipping sauce that goes with it. So we'll start making that in a bit. If you have any questions, Chef AJ, please let me know. I sure do. I love sauces. I think I, I just, I wish we could buy in the store, you know, all the chutneys and delicious Indian sauces already made without the sugar and oil. Would you consider doing that for us? Oh, uh, sure. Well, absolutely. I would love to. I keep looking at uh, Dylan's sauces too. And he's got a few of the Indian versions on his website, right? Well, your world website. Right, but I, I want like, you know, like a chutney with mint. You know, I want, I want just some real chutneys, but SOS yeah. free. We make chutneys out of anything and everything. And the really mint, the coriander, which is cilantro, mint cilantro chutney is our favorite. We always have some going at home. Today we'll be making a tomato onion garlic chutney. Okay, so we'll begin by sauteing two tomatoes. One onion, we typically use red onions back home in India. And so here as well, we use the same, but you could use any other kind of onion that you have at home. It doesn't have to be necessarily red onions. And then this garlic. So we add all of this and saute it. For the show, of course, I have all of that already sauteed and ready to go. So here's sauteed onions, tomatoes and garlic. If you want, you can even roast it in the oven like you do in the air fryer. I have a Breville as well. So just roast it for 10 minutes at 400 and it's all ready to go. And then we would grind all of this together in, in a blender until very, very smooth. So here's our handy dandy Vitamix. Add the roasted onions, tomato, and garlic combination. And then we'll be adding one teaspoon of roasted cumin seeds. Okay, dry roasted, no oil. And then we love it hot. So we are using about one to two teaspoons of red pepper flakes. Okay, just for the spice, for the chutney. Just to add a hint of sweetness, we traditionally add either sugar or a form of unrefined sugar called jaggery. But today we'll be adding dates, one medjool date, okay, or deglet date, any one of them. And here's something that you may never have seen before. These are roasted chickpeas. So they're roasted chickpeas and split. This is how chickpeas are on the inside. They are a die cut. And so two of these make one chickpea. 
and these these this is available easily at the indian store they have no oil no salt no nothing just roasted chickpeas with the outer covering removed you can get them in packets like this whole as well whole roasted chickpeas with nothing added to them. They are just roasted chickpeas. Now you can recognize them. They look like little garbanzo beans or chickpeas. So we have what's inside of these is the split version. So we had about a quarter cup of this, add a little bit of water, maybe half a cup or so, and blend it all together. And adjust the salt to your liking. If you like it with no salt, you don't have to add the salt. I know Chef AJ, you are, you go without salt. So let it all together. And I have a version already ready here to go. Let's see where it is. It's right here. So this chutney is all ready. This is how it turns out, nice and red. And it's, it tastes really, really good. All you need to do is garnish it with a hint of cilantro and look how beautiful it looks. It's gorgeous. The color is beautiful. Tastes wonderful too. And we usually have a touch chat and these chutneys you can use as a spread on bread. You can use inside a pita to flavor it up. We use it on bagels. You can use it on anything. As a dipping sauce, you can use it on salad. We use it on salad as a salad dressing as well. So they're really, really versatile. And there are parts of India in another state, our neighboring state, where they make chutneys out of all kinds of vegetables, including zucchini, carrots, cabbage, anything you name it. Now we'll be moving on to a dish that you will really like. I know you like to eat two to three pounds of vegetables every day. This one will be something that you would really, really like. So this is what goes with rava idli. It's a combination. If you sit in a restaurant in Karnataka, this is what you would order. You would, need, you would order a combination of rava idli and this vegetable dish. It's a curry dish. It's called sagu, S-A-G-U, sagu. And it's made with all kinds of vegetables. And of course, we can customize it to whatever vegetable we want. But there's a spice base that goes with it that we'll... Um, we'll put together. But before that, I'll get uh, uh, the vegetables going. Hmm. So all you have to do is steam these vegetables. I have a whole bunch of vegetables here. So you add uh, about half a cup of water, making sure not to overcook the vegetables. We'll begin with about one cup of potatoes and half a cup of carrots. And then half a cup of chayote squash, green beans cut up. Do you ever and, use an instant pot, Shoba? Um, sometimes I use, you, we could use an instant pot to steam the vegetables, but sometimes if you are not um, watching it and do a quick release on vegetables, they can get mushy. So I prefer to use a pot and then it all comes together, but you can make it in an instant pot too. Zero minutes is the best thing to do in an instant pot. Put just one cup of water and then steam it all for zero minutes. They're good to go. I've done that too. Yes, I do. So we will steam all these vegetables. It'll take about five to 10 minutes and we'll set this aside. As the vegetables are cooking and steaming, we didn't add the cauliflower notice because we don't want to overcook it. We add it way in the end. And now I'll show you the spice paste. Oh, far reach. Got it. So we'll be making a spice paste out of this. And this is what adds the curry flavor to this. And I'll show you what goes into it. This is actually a kind of chutney itself that we are using as a base. So the chutneys that we make can be used as a base. If you, if you want a quick meal, you can cook up some potatoes or carrots and cauliflower and add it to this base of chutney and that makes an excellent curry dish. Mm. So let's get started. It's a coconut curry paste. So we're using half a cup of grated coconut. We buy frozen coconut in the Indian store or you can buy it at the American grocery stores or you can use dry or desiccated coconut as well. 
one tablespoon of ginger, chopped ginger. Notice we use quite a bit of ginger in our cooking. And then jalapeno or green chilies, spicier the better for us. And then typically we use this roasted cumin as well. And again, the roasted. So these roasted garbanzo beans or chickpeas are act as a thickening agent. They add a good flavor as well, and they act as a thickening agent as well. So that's what we use to thicken sauces and all of this. And um, this is what is, goes into making of chickpea flour as well. Basin or chickpea flour that we use, this is what goes into that. And then an entire cup or a whole bunch of cilantro. So this will be like a green sauce. You can use all the stems of cilantro, everything in this, throw in everything, add some water, grind it all to an excellent taste. And once it gets creamy and nice, we use that as the base for these vegetables. We'll need a little more water. But here we go. And I have this paste already made and some vegetables already steamed. So all you need to do is add this. And if it's too thick, if you let it sit, it can get a little thick. So all you have to do is add a little bit of water, maybe a couple of tablespoons of water. And it all comes together in a nice curry paste. You can even make this curry paste ahead of time and freeze it. So you, all you have to do is steam vegetables and add this curry paste. Hmm. So we need a little more of our curry paste here, all of it perhaps. Excellent. So add this. And add another tablespoon of water. So this we can use, we, we eat, we can eat this vegetable curry dish even with the breads that we make, the Indian flat breads. You may have heard of them. Yeah, oh. absolutely. is that what naan is, N-A-A-N? Right, naan, roti, chapati, the whole wheat flat bread. So this, you know, is, is a little bit on the liquidy side. There you go. So it's like a curry dish. So this is what goes along with that rava idli that we were talking about. Okay. There you go. That is beautiful. So this is ready. We'll set that aside. We'll plate everything in a little bit. So shall we make the idlis now? So these idlis, Typically, uh, in what are we steaming it? Can you move all these vegetables out so we can steam it in that? So typically, this is what is an idli steamer. And they are dumplings typically made of rice and lentils. Just two ingredients, rice and lentils, fermented overnight, and then made in these molds. So idli is usually come out in these molds. All you have to do is take this and steam it just like you would... Uh, put it in a steamer for pasta or steamed vegetables. You have to steam it for like 10, 10 minutes. That's all. So, but today we'll show you something that everybody has at home. Our cupcake liners. Okay. So you can use silicone cupcake liners. You don't necessarily need a mold. So we'll be using some of these little silicone liners to steam. And then you can use the mesh that comes with the instant pot. Yeah, I don't know where the rock is. So you can use a rack that comes with the instant pot with the handles. Let me just check. I think it's gone back into its pot. There you go. The stand that comes with it. So we can assemble the idlis in this instead of that mold that we usually use traditionally. And they turn out absolutely perfectly. Okay, let's clear up a little bit. Let's bring this 
So we let it sit for more like 20 minutes and it's all come together really, really nicely. It's looking really good. If you want, you can add salt. And uh, let's get a current developer. Here it is. There it is. Yeah, got it. So use a ladle to add a couple of, so add all of these, get them all set, and you would just put it down here to steam for 10 minutes, cover the lid, put a timer, and that's all you need to do. So these idlis will be ready. For our show today, I have ready-made idlis, and I'll show you how they look once they come off of this mold. This is how they look. And they are gluten-free idlis or dumplings. And they go with this. And it's a chutney that we made. Shoba, at the very end, could you come even closer to the camera so we could get close-ups of all the beautiful food? Yes. Oh, that's gorgeous. Thank you. Okay. Do we have time for a couple more or? You sure do. You got at least another 30 minutes. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. So I have the salad for, for which goes with the meal. Hmm. So I'll show you a salad that we put together. And you might be wondering, where is the protein? Where are all the dals and the lentils, right? in the meal that we've put together up until now, this is where it comes in. We make a salad out of, yeah, we're going to give you a close up look, out of mung dal. These, these is called, the little ones are called mung dal and the bigger ones are called chana dal. There are two different types of dals available at the Indian store. And these yellow mung you may be already familiar with, the green mung beans that you're familiar with, the inside of the green mung beans is yellow and this, this is the split on the inside of these green moon beans. So we soak it for a couple of hours, about two tablespoons of uh, the yellow lentils and the two tablespoons of the little larger yellow lentils. And then we add a little bit of uh, chopped cu cucumber to this, okay? And then grated carrots, and this is part of a traditional meal. Any, any festival we go to or any wedding or any of our uh, traditional uh, celebrations that we have, have this kind of a salad. And then chopped with cilantro, chopped cilantro, we use a lot of cilantro in our cooking, just like in Mexican food. And then we squeeze a dollop of lime and it's good to go. So this is where our protein comes from in today's food. Not that we're worried about it, but just for those who are worried about it, this is, that's how the whole meal is completely balanced with this, uh, you know, lentil salad. And I'll just mix it all up together. And it makes a nice colorful salad. Of course, you can put tomatoes, you can put anything else you want as well in this. And it makes for a very refreshing, nice salad, easy to digest and good for health. So this is something traditional as part of most South Indian states. And then I have, last but not the least, I have a dessert that I have made, which is a lentil pudding kind of thing. So I soak my lentils, just typically it's made with this yellow mung lentil, split mung. But today I made it with the orange lentils. So I soaked these orange lentils for a couple of hours. They don't need too much soaking. You add them to a pan, add chopped dates, and cook them all together. Do I have some spoons here? Draw a little bit. Yeah, I got it. So I have chopped dates here ready to go. So add, and these dates you can add more or less to your liking. And then they're flavored with cardamom. Just a hint of cardamom. 
quarter teaspoon, I mean, one eighth teaspoon perhaps, just to flavor it. And then these saffron strands, strands of saffron that you can see. So all of this goes together. We cook it on the stove top until the lentils are lightly cooked and creamy. And this is like a pudding. And that's, that's the traditional, um, it's called paisam or kheer. Uh, in, in North of India, it's called kheer. And in the South, it's called paisam. And this is the traditional dessert that we make. It's traditionally made with that uh, uh, jaggery I was talking to you about. It's, it's, uh, um, it's an unrefined sugar that comes from sugar cane. It's kind of like a harder version of molasses, this jaggery. And, uh, and so today we're using dates instead of jaggery or any other sweetener. So this is our dessert. And so all of this is ready. I haven't, you know, I, I, this was an afterthought. I wasn't sure if I could get everything in. So I haven't been able to cook that, but everything now is ready. And you can get a close up of all of this and see that our rava idlis with sagu, with chutney, salad and dessert are all good to go. Oh my God. And you, I mean, you made that so quickly. Yeah, we have, we have a huge team here that has helped me put everything together. And it was hard for me to keep track of, you know, what to show when, but it's all come together really well. And, and it's a little bit later for you. So it's almost lunchtime. So you're going to have an amazing lunch. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we can't wait. I cannot believe how quickly this came together. Where can people get your recipes? Do you have a book? Or are you going to write a book? Um, I haven't thought of writing a book, but I do have a website. I think a book will take a long time to collate and put everything together. I, but I do have a website and I also have a YouTube channel that people can go to. And all of these dishes will be on my YouTube channel um, that I've made. So they can go to that. My website is called annapurna-nutrition.com and annapurna is spelled A-N-N-A-P-O-O-R-N-A-nutrition.com. And I have all those links. I have all those links right underneath the YouTube video in what's called the show notes. Wonderful. Wow. So how often do you teach your classes? And are these classes in person? Are they virtual? Can anyone take them? Yeah, anyone can take my classes. They used to be in person and I used to have a lot of fun customizing it to the, to the you know, to the people, to the participants. But uh, now due to COVID, I do them on Zoom. So all of this is shown as videos in terms of how they can cook and how they can make their favorite dishes at home. So I run classes on a monthly basis. I have one free introductory class every month and then four classes in, on the follow in, in that month. So every month we have new set of classes starting. People can take my classes anytime. I also teach at Morehouse, like I was mentioning to you, alongside Dr. Jennifer Rook. And um, I teach nutrition and cooking there. And Dr. Rook puts together the classes. You know, I've heard of her and I don't know why. I think I've actually talked to her. I'm going to ask her to be on the show. That would be amazing. That would be wonderful. I was telling her the same thing as I was talking to her last night because we're planning for the Wednesday show that's coming up. So... Every Wednesday we have a class and uh, it's a series of 12 classes three times a year. Yeah. I'm curious, have you ever tried the California balsamic vinegars that I love so much? I do. I have them at home as well. Um, I do use them on our salads and other things, but we want our spicy salad dressing. My husband just loves spicy salad dressing. So I usually whip up my salad dressing two minutes before lunchtime. The reason I ask is because just for being a guest on the show, every guest the first time gets two, three bottles and the flavor of their choice. And I'm wondering, as, as somebody that knows traditional Indian cuisine, how do you feel about the curry or have you tasted the curry flavor? Oh, I haven't. I haven't tasted the curry flavor. I'd love to taste it. So maybe that's the one you can order. And if your husband likes spicy, they have one called Blazin Habanero. That's Dr. Gregor's favorite. That's really spicy. Oh, cool. I probably ordered those two flavors. For sure. Hey, so we have a fun question from Jesse. She said, I read that Shoba started out as an automotive engineer. What prompted her change in profession? Um, 
Well, I, you're right. I worked in the automotive industry for more than 22 to, to 25 nice. years. Um, I worked on really cool cars like the Dodge Viper, the Dodge Challenger, and many of these. And I have really fond memories and I loved and enjoyed my time there. Um, but during the downturn of the automotive industry in 2008, 2009, we moved from Michigan to Atlanta and I started a fresh year. In 2010, I lost my job. So I was now wondering what I would like to do as a second career because I had put in so many years in the automotive field, but I really didn't want to graze the traffic and go into work. And with automotive engineering, you have to be, you know, close to a car to, in order to work on the cars and other things. So I knew that working from home was not an option. So I started to look around in 2010 to see what I could do. And that's how I stumbled upon all these, the veganism and the new um, uh, information that was coming out in terms of factory farms and all of that. And that really um, not only affected me, but I wanted to be um, spread awareness and educate as many as possible. And so this is my second career now to just help people. And then when I found out about health and nutrition, the connection to health and nutrition, that was, that, that was you know, that was a no brainer. Um, that's what I wanted to do because even in among Indians, and even among vegetarians, we have a high propensity of diabetes, of cancer, of heart disease. Every other week, I hear someone who's as young as 35, perhaps, as young as 40, as young as 41, either having a heart attack or sometimes even unfortunately dying of a heart attack. So this prompted me to help the community, not only the Indian community here, but the general community that I live in and I wanted to educate them. And this information that we have, the power of food to prevent and reverse diseases is so powerful that I want to take it on the road to communities. And that's why I shifted careers, that this was more fun, something that was more fun to do. Yeah, and great. Well, you, you, do, you, you do it wonderfully. I have some comments and questions. A lot of people are saying they like uh, uh, cardamom. Elizabeth says, where can you buy saffron powder? I've seen it at Trader Joe's, believe it or not. Yes, yes. Trader Joe's, all Indian stores will have cardamom and saffron. Yeah. Well, one of the live viewers says, Mung Dal, one cup has the energy and protein of a chicken. How do you like that? Yes, yes. We, we make, Mung Dal is one of our, even Ayurveda really uh, supports the use of Mung Dal for, you know, daily cooking and for Dal. It's the easiest on your stomach. Babies can have it anybody with any other issues like IBS or anything, this is a perfectly safe and uh, easy to digest dal, that is moong dal, and it's those little yellow split moong dal, and which comes in the outer packing as a green moong, you know? Yep. Uh, Susanna says, can you make SOS free masala dosa? I miss that dish so much. Absolutely, I make it at home almost every week. That is and so cool. Absolutely. You, if you have a nice enough uh, nonstick pan, you can make the dosas on that. And then the filling, you can easily make oil free. I always make, I've been making it now for over 10 years. Great. So when you first went plant-based, was it easy to get any friends or family to join you? Uh, that's always a tricky, tricky part, right? I mean, your friends and family think you're crazy, you're extreme, and it's, it's kind of hard. But um, I've realized that we've got to chug along and be the example for others. But there are a few friends that I have. We've all formed a few groups that, and I have a really nice support group on WhatsApp that uh, anybody can join. And we share recipes, we share our meal that we eat every day, and especially our favorite meals, especially the deep fried fritters and the and the, and Indian snacks of that kind. Those are the hardest to give up, like the samosas you might have heard of, right? And, and we also make pakodis and bhajiyas where we take perfectly good cauliflower, dip it in um, chickpea batter and deep fry it. So I have versions of it on my website and on my YouTube channel that I make in my air fryer and I make them every week. That's great. I'm so glad to hear that you have an air fryer. I love my air fryer. Uh, what can I substitute for onions? People are saying hing. Do you ever use hing? 
Yes, hing or asafoetida is a gum from a tree, almost like maple syrup type of thing. And uh, it's used in, in cooking for aiding digestion and for adding flavor. So we typically use hing in our chutneys. We can use a tad of hing. And that brings to point um, what, we, what would we do to season all of this? Because we are big into seasoning everything. Once the dishes are made, we season with a whole bunch of, again, another set of uh, combination of spices and lentils. And I'll show you what I have here in terms of seasoning. Maybe we can move all of this out of the way so you can see the seasonings. Here. So these are all the seasonings that we use. For example, if I were to season this chutney, typically we would season it in oil in a, take a teaspoon of oil and add a little bit of some of these things and different seasoning combinations for different dishes. And here's hing that we use, powdered hing that you get at the store. And you would just sprinkle a little bit into this dish or when we are cooking our vegetables, we would sprinkle this on that. And then we would use all this, this is mustard seeds, just like the white mustard seeds you get in the American grocery store. We, our mustard seed is traditionally black mustard. And this very fine type of mustard, we typically roast it in oil. All of these things are typically roasted in oil, in a little bit of oil, like a teaspoon, and then added to dishes. But what I've done here is dry roasted them. And traditionally, we already know how to dry roast cumin, you know. That's the knowledge we already have. So it's called, in Hindi, it's called bhunahua jeera. And it's used into flavor dals. It's used to flavor so many dishes, even chutneys and everything. So this is traditionally made like this without any oil. So everybody knows how to make this. So when I teach people how to uh, roast their spices without oil or how to temper them or season them without oil, I point to this jeera that's, that's cumin that's already roasted. They know how to roast and say, in a very similar manner, roast all your spices. So here's cumin that's already roasted. Here's sesame seeds that's already roasted. We use that as a topping as well. Here's curry leaves that is typically traditionally slightly roasted in oil, but I have dried it and then break it into small pieces and add it to dishes. And here's red chilies. Just like in Mexico, you have different types of red chilies. We have different types of red chilies in India as well. These are dry roasted as well. And kept ready to go for seasoning. And I'll show you how I put all of this together. And this is mustard seeds, like I showed you. This is a kind of lentils, similar to the moong lentils, the yellow lentils, but these are white. They're called urad dal. I, I think there are at least 40 to 50 different types of lentils. And each lentil can be cooked in four different ways. One whole as it is, one without the skin, but whole. And third one into die cuts and so many different variations of each one of these you can have. And you don't have to repeat it through the entire year. Here. here is one that's roasted, it's chana dal. So typically for a chutney, I would put a little bit of this ura dal that's already roasted and add just like maybe a quarter teaspoon of it. And then a quarter teaspoon of this roasted mustard seeds. And then a little bit of these red chilies. How we use this is I've roasted it already. So we would just break it up just to add when it touches the liquid in the chutney, it would impart some spicy flavor. So break it up and this is how it would look. If you can zoom in, then that would be good to see, show you how the seasoning looks. That just takes it to another level, doesn't it? Yes, absolutely. So everything, or most of our dishes are seasoned like this with different combinations of these seasonings. That is brilliant. Well, speaking of seasonings, there's a question from Michelle. What dried spices and herbs do the wedding hosts give you after a wedding ceremony to aid digestion? Oh, the fennel seeds she's fennel talking seeds. about. Spawn and fennel seeds. Okay. Yeah. So I do have fennel seeds here. We usually have fennel seeds 
and they are uh, they look very close to the to cumin seeds but they impart a very nice flavor and there are different types of fennel seeds some are thicker fatter some are really small yeah really fine yeah here i have in these little gerber jars so um these aid in nutrition very true and they're mixed with sugary sugar coated fennel seeds as well that is so cool and then pan is yeah these these uh, typically people eat about maybe a quarter teaspoon of it after lunch or after any meal to aid in digestion and then there's this pan that they serve in um, weddings and special occasions that's made of a leaf called betel leaf and then you add things like this fennel seed and of course there are other tidbits that we add that are made out of sugar um uh, large quantity of that but then we can make them sugar free as well with dates and uh, flavor them with rose petals and they have an amazing smell and an amazing flavor and that aids in digestion as well these are the two things we have i've heard of fennel tea but so you can actually eat the seeds to aid in digestion yes yes and we we make we add uh, one part of india called punjab or sometimes in america they call it punjab but it's actually punjab um in one of the states of india it is the eastern state they make a tea with uh, fennel seeds along with the ginger the masala tea that we you know a masala chai as we call it um they add fennel seeds to their tea great and there's a question from edith uh but um okay where did it go it was something about what's your greatest tip for oil free cooking there it is yeah what is your favorite oil free trick favorite oil free trick is uh, to use the air fryer or um just use a little bit of water to deglaze the pan yeah that's perfect yeah thanks and uh, jessy says do you cook the lentils before you roast them no no these no 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 none at all it's just raw lentils you buy from the store ready made and then you just roast it dry roast it in a in a pan or you can roast it in the oven as well did you notice any difference in how you felt when you went from vegetarian to vegan either how you looked or how you felt yes i lost 25 to 30 pounds i am not very tall and i used to weigh about 138 pounds closing in on 140 um before i went uh, vegan as well as uh, whole foods plant based um and slowly but surely i have lost about 25 to 30 pounds and now i weigh about 110 pounds which is about the right uh, weight for my build and my height and everything and i used to weigh exactly this amount about 10 to 15 years ago so you know that as you slowly get older you pack on the weight and keep all those oils and other things going even though i was vegetarian right and you i'm guessing you did it even without vigorous exercise Yes, absolutely. Though I do I do love to exercise. I um I'm a certified yoga instructor and a meditation and dhyana instructor as well. So, um I I do that on a regular basis including uh, pranayama which is the breathing uh, techniques. So, this is part of my daily practice along with all the spiritual practice that we have. Amazing. Do you teach the yoga on Zoom as well or in person or both? uh in person on both yeah zoom as well as in person that is so cool shanti says even your dog was vegan and he was very healthy yes we had a border collie we lost him in may and he was vegan definitely and he used to eat a lot of vegetables we used to give him green beans cauliflower broccoli carrots and he loved it with every meal he loved his home prepared meals much more than the you know vegan tidbits that we bought for him Great. Thank you. Well, gosh, you are just a wonderful presenter and your rest. I really think you should think about writing a cookbook because there have been some vegan Indian cookbooks, but I'm not aware of any that are completely oil free. That's that's true. That's true. Definitely. Definitely. I I I think I need a little bit of motivation and and someone to prod me in the back because I can get, you know, to procrastinate quite a bit on some of these projects. So, yes, definitely. I'll definitely look into it and think about it. Hopefully people who are watching maybe somebody will come up and help me put it all together and I can give all the recipes and the tidbits. 
Yeah, yeah, that would be amazing. Anybody watching, please, because th- we need this book because people love Indian food, but so much of it is just doused in oil. Yes, it's hard to eat at an Indian restaurant. It's uh, it, nearly impossible. The chickpea curry or chole, as we call it, is made so flavorful and so yummy without a drop of oil. But why? I don't know. It'll have oil floating on it. Yeah. What's your, uh, uh, what is your favorite Indian dish? Uh, my favorite Indian dish is masala dosa along with sambar and chutney. Sambar is a lentil um, stew kind of thing, but it's quite watery as a dipping sauce we use with our, that's the one that has all the vegetables because our dosa and the masala dosa has a potato stuffing in it and the chutneys are like this. Um, but the vegetable part comes from the sambar that we that we make. And I now I make sambar with all the vegetables in it. Traditionally, sambar is made with rarely with all vegetables, typically with single vegetables. You like you'll have green bean sambar or potato and onion and tomato sambar or cabbage sambar, something like that. But now we've started to use multiple vegetables in our sambar and it tastes really good. It's a lentil spiced with a combination of many of these spices put together. We make a spice powder called sambar powder, which is on my website. We make that at home and then we add it to this cooked lentils and then add all the steamed veggies to it. Nice. Well, Shanta is saying we can do it, meaning I think, uh, meaning write the book. So there are people to help you. Oh, wonderful. That'll be really nice. That'll yeah. be really- uh, um, Susanna says, what are your favorite SOS free desserts? Um, my favorite SOS free dessert is uh, we make date laddus, date and uh, different kinds of nuts we use, and we make these little laddus, and that's my favorite. And also from the south of India, where I come from, there's a kind of millet called ragi. It's the same kind of millet that I made the um, idlis out of, but they're black in color. They look almost like this. And they are a millet called rag, uh, ragi. And these millets are actually seeds of a grass. And there are, there are, I think, six or seven different types of millets in India and primarily grown in India. And uh, so I make laddus, which are like truffles, out of this ragi um, and dates, coconut, peanuts, uh, sesame seeds, all of this combined. So these two are my favorite. Oh, that sounds great. Well, you are a terrific presenter and I'd love for you to come back and make more delicious food. Maybe some chutneys. I love chutney. Maybe we can have a show, just chutneys. I would love to. I'm booking for July. There may be a few dates in June. Please come back and please consider manufacturing a line because I'm lazy. I'm, I know how to make it, but I just want to be able to go to the store and buy it. Sure. If you can help me get connected with people who are who have a product no, I can, I'll connect you with Dylan right now. So if you like it. I mean, oh, that'll be perfect. Yes, I have been watching his shows as well for a long time now since he got started. I absolutely will connect you. And, and uh, Naha says you make very nice dry snack mixtures. So let's do a show on dry snack mixtures and chutney whenever you're available to come back. Sure. And these chutneys can be used as dressings too. You know, how did, sat- how did, how did I find you? Did I find you or did you find me? So I'm happy I, I found did. you. Yeah, well, I, I'm so happy you did because you, you have a wonderful... So here are some of the laddus I was talking to you about, Chef AJ. Nice. I'll have to see if there's an Indian store by me. I'm in the desert and I don't know if I've seen one. No, I think you'll have to go to LA where you used to live before. Yeah, and th- th- we had those for sure. There was many, many of them. Well, thank you so much, Shoba. I really enjoyed your presentation and I only wish I could taste the food that you made. Yeah, we can't wait to all sit down and eat the food and thank you so much for having me oh my pleasure believe me i'm as soon as we get off the air i'm emailing you to get you back as soon as possible for another presentation sure good look forward to it thank you so much and thanks all of you for watching another episode of chef aj live please come back tomorrow when we have two shows at the regular time of 11 a.m pacific time we welcome back dr sean geisinger and she is going to be talking about why so many women really want to be thin and then at 2 p.m we have a bonus show with marion maloney who is going to be introducing a very special week of dfn doctors for nutrition these are australian doctors that specialize in lifestyle medicine. Take care, everyone. And thanks again, Shoba. You're wonderful. Thank you so much, Chef AJ. Thank you for all that you do. My, well, 